simulations and knew that the star was going to implode but they didn't know when it was an amazing sight our sister star with its deep gravitational pull showed their home world just how powerful it really is the star around which this system's planets orbit is small and only has a few planets in its immediate vicinity mercury is the closest planet to the star and there are also settlements on Venus and Mars. However, the settlement on Mars was destroyed in a cataclysm. It was totally destroyed, its atmosphere was raped away in the explosion. The architecture all over Mars was buried in sand. The inhabitants of the planet outside of Mars didn't survive when it exploded. All that remains is a ring of asteroids that we commonly call the asteroid belt. Beyond the asteroid belt is Jupiter with its rings and Saturn, Neptune and Uranus. There's another world out there that used to be our home. It orbits the Nemesis star, which is now a collapsed black hole binary that is a part of our system, for which Archaic's organization have released several videos about explaining the anomalies in astronomy that cannot be explained without a large gravitational dark and seen body south of our solar system. We have two ecliptic planes in our system, not just one. The assumption that we've had only one ecliptic planes and one center of gravity in our system is the reason why so many anomalies go undocumented and unexplained by scientific research. When you include the second ecliptic plane, you are effectively creating a second center of gravity that transects the plane of gravity that we are on. We are now at 23.5 degrees of tilt and the gravitational orbital anomalies of Neptune and Uranus can be explained by the tilt of all the planets which are farther away from the, the strength of the gravitational pull of the Sun. The yield is higher so they go further out in space and they switch places because they are attached to a large gravitational body outside the solar system. The further a planet is from the sun, the weaker the gravitational pull from the sun is. This weaker pull results in a higher yield. So planets tend to be further out in space. The planets switch places because they are all attached to a large gravitational body outside the solar system. They knew from running their simulations. What was going to happen? They ran thousands of simulations and they get the same things over and over. So they had to come up with a way to save their populations. So they prepared. In their own simulations, they decided to experiment with humans using their own DNA. They decided to go ahead before the detonation with the experience. They were 100% humans. They knew later on that they would be mistaken for gods. They began settling a new world at the other star, the star that was going to survive. Some chose to settle separate versions of the human race, some with high melatonin, some with pigmentation, and some with low abilities. They genetically modified them for different temperate Arctic climates. They needed to see what versions of humans could thrive in this new hostile environment. Because for thousands of years, they had been living in sunless space stations, in mining colonies, in exo worlds on capital ships. The human race had become so populated that they had mined themselves out of their own worlds. They looked at the new star, which was our binary sister star, and found great opportunity. They began to terraform, shaping its environment and weather conditions. They tried everything they could 
to see how they could survive just by modifying our DNA. They ran tests and experiences, hoping to find a way to help them survive by changing our DNA. It was a long shot, but they were determined to find a way.